In the ongoing murder case of Corey Richens, a recently unsealed search warrant revealed a significant detail concerning the autopsy conducted on her deceased husband, Eric Richens. And let's just say it does not look good for Corey. Corey is accused of spiking her husband's cocktail with fentanyl the night he died back in March of 2022. And she is charged with aggravated murder and three counts of possession with intent to distribute a controlled substance. She had pled not guilty to all of these charges. Also, she recently has been in trouble and accused for witness tampering and her behavior really hasn't been stellar right from the beginning. In previous videos, I talked about Corey's malicious ways, such as writing a children's book about grief, which on the surface sounds really good, but allegedly she was hoping to profit from her husband's murder. And she also wrote a damning letter in jail, trying to coax a witness in what to say. And she signed a house deal on a few million dollar home the day after Eric died, something Eric had issues with in the days leading up and then she threw a party to celebrate the signing of the house 24 hours after Eric was murdered. So today let's dive into the newly outed evidence and talk about what's going on. I'm Linda with It's a Crime so now let's get into it. Corey has had a string of issues since landing her butt in jail and awaiting trial. She wrote a six-page letter called Walk the Dog, where she was telling her mom in the letter to instruct her brother to testify falsely when it comes time to go to court, which got her a witness tampering allegation. She said though she was merely writing pages for an upcoming fictional mystery book. However, these papers were concealed in her cell and found and she's in a lot of hot water. She also was seen in a previous hearing expressing duping delight, which if you didn't pay attention, you could miss it. But of course, I had to point it out on a YouTube short. I'll put the link below. Now, Corey's sister-in-law and Eric's sister also was in court and talked about Corey and her antics before her husband was murdered and after. But what was the most haunting was the fact that she mentioned that Corey had several insurance policies on her children as well. So the question was, were they next? Since Eric's death, it has come to our attention that Corey took out multiple life insurance policies on Eric without his knowledge. It appears that she forged his signature on various documents, assigned herself as Eric's durable power of attorney, inappropriately diverted money from his business to herself, and assigned herself as beneficiary of Eric's portion of our mother's retirement account. I should also no not forget to mention the multiple life insurances she has taken out on the boys. Her most recent business venture was authoring a children's book about how to help grieving children cope with the loss of, a, of the death of a parent. In this book, she had the audacity to use the boys' real names and even use their last family portrait. Her behavior gives me great concern as she has exploited the boys for money and will likely do so again. In addition, Corey has weaponized Eric's children, manipulating my dad to do or not do things by threatening to, come him, to cut him out of their lives if he, did, if he did not capitulate to her demands. She similarly deprived the boys of contact with myself, my sister, and her daughters unless we agreed to give her the money in Eric's trust money that Eric wanted to go to his three children. As if that were not enough, I have been told that Corey started telling their three little boys that none of Eric's family or friends loved them. She apparently told them none of us cared for them or wanted to be around them, even though that is the exact opposite of what was happening. We all want nothing more than to be there for those three little boys, my nephews, yet Corey has made sure to cut us out of every aspect of their lives. Recently, documents were unsealed and in it contained information on Eric's autopsy results. We know previously he had fentanyl in his system and five times the lethal dose. And not only did Eric have fentanyl in his system from his little murderous Moscow mule given to him by his ever so loving wife, but it looks like there was something else in his system. Now more 
on that in a minute. But back in March of 2023, which was a year after Eric's death, there was an application filed requesting access to Corey's medical records and included an affidavit from the investigator on the case. You see, according to the warrant, it said, I requested a review of the stomach contents and saw that Eric also had a small amount of quetiapine. Hopefully that's how you say it. I forgot to look it up. Please forgive me if it's not. So they checked that in his stomach contents. Eric did not have a prescription for quetiapine, but his wife had a prescription as well as the pills at their home. Now, this drug is also commonly known as Seroquel, and Seroquel is typically used to treat bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and various mood and mental disorders. And a small amount of this drug was detected in Eric's stomach, but it was prescribed to Corey. And Corey admitted to having the prescription, telling detectives that she had been prescribed the antipsychotic and said it was to help her sleep, not for anything else. But of course, the medical examiner's office said, well, that wasn't the intended use of those meds. The warrant states this about Corey and the meds. It says, she initially told me that she occasionally used the pills as a sleeping aid. When speaking to the medical examiner and her colleagues, this is not the intended use of the medication that is shown as an antipsychotic. Eric's family lawyer, Greg Scordis, talked about the unsealing of these documents and said that this is more damaging to have it public than most consider of it. He said there was a lot of fentanyl found in his stomach. A lot of it hadn't even metabolized into his blood yet. There was so much poison that he was administered that it hadn't even gotten into his bloodstream. Had the amount of drugs that were found in his stomach gotten into anybody's bloodstream, it would have killed an army of people. Now, I did a previous video and included the timeline of what happened the night Eric died, and there was some interesting and shady behavior done by Corey and recorded by digital evidence. Check it out at the end of this video, or I'll have it in the description box below. Now, from the sounds of it, Eric knew something was up before he was killed. He told family members that if anything ever happened to him, that Corey should be investigated. This is the same kind of story we heard in the Charles Vallow case with Lori Vallow Davis and both had to do with money. Corey took almost $135,000 from Eric's businesses. There were changes to his policies. And once Eric learned about these policies, he consulted a divorce attorney. But Corey had a prenup that was presented to her by Eric's mother. And in it, the only way she'd get money is if Eric died. And when he died, it wasn't the first attempt allegedly. A few months before, on February 11th of 2022, police say Corey got her hands on 15 to 30 pills from a dealer. Three days later on Valentine's Day, no less, shortly after dinner, Eric got really, really sick and he believed he had been poisoned. And he even told a friend that he thought his wife was trying to poison him. They were also on vacation previous to this and he got violently ill as well. Now, Corey allegedly got another batch of drugs on February 26th and Eric died on March 4th. Corey would collect on at least five life insurance policies which just so happened to cover the amount of her debts that she incurred. She was apparently in a lot of debt. Now, speaking of medications, apparently a while back, Corey was given the wrong medication in jail and was said to have had seizures and was taken to the hospital from the Utah Summit County Jail. And according to an unknown source, this was the sixth time she been given the wrong medication in there. It wasn't mentioned what the medication actually was that she was prescribed, if it was this Seroquel, and it wasn't mentioned as to what the wrong type of medication was given instead. Now, this incident led to the authorities searching her cell and finding that letter, Walk the Dog, that is pretty damning against Corey and is considered witness tampering, even though Corey adamantly denies it, saying she was simply writing pages for a future book. Now, my question is, was this a legit seizure? You'd think it would be hard to fake, right? And from my understanding, it is. But there are people out there who do try and fake it. And was she really given the wrong medicine? I mean, six times is a lot, right? Was that Corey saying it? 
was it the jail saying that she got it wrong? Like, who said that she got the wrong medicine? But Corey has a tendency to be like Letitia Stoke, in my opinion, the evil stepmother who killed her stepson Gannon in the Gannon Stoke case. And there were a lot of lies with Letitia and with Corey so far. Well, it looks like she likes to fib. That's her pattern. She's also like Lori Valley Daybell a little bit. A lot of theatrics in court, eye rolling, laughing, fake crying, you name it. Corey has it. It's like if Lori and Letitia had a little baby sister, that would be Corey in my opinion. So one does question le the legitimacy in a lot of behavior. And I do believe that she's going to continue to make a spectacle of herself in court even ever so slightly. She's facing 25 years to life in prison without parole if convicted. And now here's something I find interesting. Corey's apparently studying for the LSAT in hopes of becoming a defense lawyer for people who are unjustly accused. Remember when I talked about Letitia a minute ago? She wanted to represent herself in court and she started talking a whole bunch of Jesus talk when she decided to write the judge. And yep, if you didn't know that, she did write the judge. I feel like this has a similar feel to it. You know how a lot of people in prison find God, some legitimately and some, well, they like to manipulate, right? So I feel like this is the latter for Corey. In my opinion, let me know what you think below. Now, let's talk about the people who knew Eric and Corey. Some are saying that Eric had begun drinking and taking illegal drugs during their marriage, abandoning the Mormon religion. Corey's best friend said, I believe Eric must have died from an accidental overdose. Another friend said that the Richens family members want to believe Eric was perfect in every way, that Eric couldn't have died in any other way besides Corey's hands. But the evidence against Corey is sure stacking up. And one tricky part of the case that could support Corey's defense has to do with a cocktail glass found in the home. At Corey's bail hearing back in June of 2023, a lead investigator testified that the empty cup was never tested for traces of drugs. And Corey had told investigators that Eric had a drink. So I wonder how that will play out. Let me know what you think about that. Check out my playlist right here on the Corey Richens case and you can check out the Duper's Delight also in the description box below where I have it in a YouTube short or check out my shorts. And also you can check out another case on the Bowman case where a man drugged his wife who happened to be a doctor and he tried to get away with it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there.